I've seen makeup artists do this numerous times and it's a big no-no. Hey guys, welcome back to the 14th day of the 25 days of Kitmas. I hope you guys are all having a great day and having a really fun time with all the Kitmas videos. I want you guys to know that I thoroughly do appreciate each and every one of you, especially if you guys have tuned in for the last 13 days. I am honestly really, really grateful for you guys. As you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be going over makeup kit sanitation. I do know that some cosmetology schools do not teach the correct hygienic procedures to sanitize makeup. So I really wanna make this 100% clear for you guys and I also want to explain the reason behind why we also sanitize our things this way as well So let me go ahead and get started because this is probably going to be a lengthier video Okay, I'm gonna take you down a little bit closer just so you guys can kind of see what we're working with here The main things that you really want to have in terms of actual sanitation are three basic elements And this is going to be your 70% alcohol This is what you're going to spray down all of the powders with or your tools that you're using You do need to have 70% alcohol exactly because if you go any lower than that then it doesn't sanitize it enough to kill any bacteria on your items but if you go over the 70% then it does absorb too quickly to actually sanitize anything so 70% is the exact ratio that you want I do have mine conveniently in this spray bottle just so it is a little bit more handy this one's just one that I got from my beauty supply store and then you also want to have another essential which is a palette of some sort this one is just a clear acrylic palette although you can buy a metal one if you want to I just prefer to have a clear one just so I can see the true color pigmentation of a color instead of having it distorted by the metal color. This one is from the Artist Kit Company, although I can link you guys another one that I found off of Amazon. Having a palette though is really essential to scoop out any cream products and depot them. You always want to avoid physical contact with any of the products with your hands, so don't be putting products on like the back of your hand and working off of there. It's really unsanitary. Make sure you have a palette of some sort. Then the next thing of course is a spatula. This one is just a metal mixing spatula. It's double-ended, so it has a squared tip on one end and then a pointed tip on the other. I did get it from Amazon. So now I'm going on to my actual kit. If you guys want to know specifically what I keep inside of this kit, check out the rest of the 13 days of Kitmas that I uploaded. I did include it on a Kitmas 2022 playlist. The first thing you want to do before touching anything inside of your kit is you want to go ahead and use some hand sanitizer on yourself or you can go ahead and go to a sink and wash your hands. It kind of just depends whatever resource that you have. So I will go ahead and sanitize my hands first. Be pretty lenient with this. I have a pretty good amount of hand sanitizer in here, like enough for it to be kind of wet looking. And you want to go all the way up to your wrist and then make sure that is fully absorbed into your skin just so the alcohol inside of it has time to sanitize your hands. Again, you can also use a sink, but I just like the easiness of using hand sanitizer. Now you wanna go ahead and sanitize your palette with 70% alcohol. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down front and back. Then I'm gonna grab some tissues and then I'm gonna wipe off everything on here. And also make sure to get the sides too. Sometimes products can get up on the sides as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that all of the alcohol is dried and fully absorbed into the palette. Now I have a super clean palette going on. Then you also want to sanitize your spatula really quickly. So I'm gonna spray that down. Take a tissue, and then I'm just gonna wipe that off as well. Any of your cream products like this, you're gonna go ahead and scoop out with a spatula like this. And then you're going to want to put it onto your palette. Then the other option is to use a disposable. These are all the disposables that I have. I have them inside of this fishing tackle box that I got off of Amazon. It's supposed to hold fishing lures, but there is five pockets inside of here that perfectly fit disposables. And these are all of them. You never wanna double dip with products. So having disposables is a really great option here. Um, so really quickly, I have some regular mascara wands. Then I have some little brow spoolies that I also use for lower lashes. Then I have these eyeliner disposables that I can use for lash glue then some Q-tips, and then also the lip applicators. I'm just gonna take one of the lip applicators here. If you just dip in once, you can go into the eye cream and go like this, and then you can just put it underneath a client's eye, and then you can either tap it out with your fingers or tap it out with a brush, however you prefer. Then the next one is a lip mask, and then same method with this. You can either use a spatula and then scoop it out and put it onto your palette, and then take a brush and apply it to a client like that. Or you can also take a little disposable and then scoop out the lip product like this, and then just apply it onto a client's lips. With the brow gel, 
As you can tell, there's markings inside of there because what I usually like to do is I like to take one of the brow spoolies and then I will go in here, scrape it off like this. So it's on the brow spoolie and then only dip in once. Once you have used this once and it has touched somebody's face, you cannot reuse it. So if you need more of this product, you have to throw it away, grab another spoolie and then dip in again and then apply it and then throw it away. Each and every time it touches somebody's skin, just get a new disposable. If you obviously reuse the disposable, you're just contaminating products and then that kind of negates the idea of a disposable. So just make sure that you are only using it once. So this depotting method basically goes for like any creams or liquids or anything. So if you to do like liquid foundations anything in squeeze jars obviously you just want to squeeze out on your palette then you can use a brush or a sponge and apply it from here you just never want to put anything on the back of your hand and then use it on somebody that's super unhygienic any products that come out like this that are inside of a doe foot applicator like this liquid blush can be depotted and scooped out on a palette use the actual applicator and put it on your palette like this Use a brush and then work out from here. But if it's a lip gloss like this, then you can either put it on a palette like this, take a little disposable or a lip brush if you want to at that point in time and then use this off the palette. Or the other option is to dip in completely, go in with the product on the lips. Then if you need more, of course, you wanna throw this one away use a different disposable and then dip in again and then go back that way. The one thing you wanna ask yourself is has that physically touched a person's face? If it has, throw it away or figure out a way to not have them cross contaminate each other. Then if you have a concealer that looks like this with a doe foot applicator that you usually use on your face directly, you don't obviously wanna use this on somebody's face because otherwise you will contaminate it and spraying the tip down with alcohol does not sanitize it enough. So make sure you are depotting it somehow. So again, you can either scrape it off on your palette and then go with a brush off of there or you can take a lipstick applicator dip it in like this and then you can actually go in and then use it like this right underneath a person's eye like a normal concealer wand again don't double dip throw this one away to do the other eye so i think you pretty much get the gist with like liquids and cream products everything just needs to go on this palette or go in with a disposable for it the next thing i want to go over is mascaras and brow gels or anything that's like in a tube like this the same method applies for these as it does with the lip glosses that i just showed what you want to do is you want to go ahead and open the mascara some artists even cut off the mascara tip completely so you're not tempted to use them i just know not to use it automatically, but you want to go ahead and remove this, set it aside just so you're not tempted. Then you want to take one of the little mascara spoolies. I do personally like the ones that have these colored tips on them, just because you can actually see the product physically if it's on there. The black ones usually blend in with the mascara, so you can't really see it as easily and see if you are coating it well enough. Then what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and dip in with the mascara. You can definitely notice where the mascara actually is on there and if you have enough. And then you want to go ahead and apply it on somebody's eye. Then if you need to go onto the lower lashes or you need to add more mascara, don't just double dip again once it's touched somebody's eye, you wanna throw this away. Get a new mascara wand, dip it in again, and then apply it again. And then you can safely close it back up. And that way there's no cross contamination happening within the mascara tube. Then same thing for eyebrow gels. And I know a bunch of people do use eyebrow gels directly on people, but keep in mind that you are still physically touching somebody's face. So you need to have the same sanitation procedures that you do with mascaras. I will take a brow spoolie and then I'll dip in like this. And then I will apply it to one eyebrow and then apply it to the other if I need more. I feel like I'm repeating myself now, but just throw it away, grab a new one, dip it in again, and then apply it. Then as far as any powders go, like these are all my eyeshadows that I keep. They don't have to be scooped out or depotted or anything. They're not the same thing as cream items because creams usually are more emollient, which means that they can harbor bacteria and bacteria can harbor in liquids and creams just because of the moisture in there. But since powders don't have any moisture, they only have bacteria that lies on the top part of the surface and they can't penetrate in it. So all you have to do is sanitize the top layer of it, which is just spraying it down with 70% alcohol. So I'm gonna take my spray bottle. You're gonna notice all of these got darker because now they're wet, obviously. What you wanna do is you want to make sure that these completely dry, wait till they change back to their original color. That means they have fully been sanitized and absorbed and everything. And then you can move on and use it on the next person, but just make sure they absorb. The other thing you can do if you do want to be like 100% sanitary and you have time to do it, you can take a cotton pad here and I've seen some makeup artists do this. Rub it around on whatever powder that you're trying to use like this. 
Then you can take a brush like this, tap it in the surface, and now it's on my brush, and then you can use it to apply. Then it basically keeps your powders 100% hygienic. I might start doing this, to be totally honest, in the future. Then if you do have powders like I do that are depotted into like little jars or sifter containers or something, everybody always asks how I apply these. And what I end up doing with these is I go ahead and open the little sifter jars. Then I will go ahead and dump them onto my palette. So I'll just tilt them up tap a little bit of it out. Now that it's on my palette right here, I'll go ahead and take a brush and then work off of there. And that's how I hygienically use this. Of course, any other powders like highlighters and everything can just be sprayed down directly with the alcohol. Then of course, with any eyeliners like this, they are creams. So you wanna go ahead and make sure you scoop it out. You guys can obviously see all of my scoop marks inside of there, which means I have been hygienic with this the whole time, but you just wanna scoop it out like this, get a little bit on your spatula put it on your palette and you can work off of there with a liner brush. And while I'm on the subject of liners, I do wanna mention really quickly that it is not hygienic to carry around liquid liners or felt tip liners. So this is mine personally that I have with me. And this is a felt tip liner. As you can see, it's a sponge, which means that you can't hygienically sanitize this. Even if you sanitize it with alcohol, the sponge actually goes all the way down into the middle of this barrel right here. And the alcohol cannot travel all the way through it to sanitize it. You can't sanitize sponges with alcohol. And then same with felt tips. They are brush tips technically. And then those do go all the way down into the barrel too. You have to use them directly on somebody's face and you are touching them directly. So again, that's a huge no-no. So if you guys have any eyeliners that are felt tips or brush tips, please get rid of them because they're not safe to use on people. Then I did wanna really quickly touch on sponges. So a lot of the times artists will use sponges to blend in foundation or blend in concealer, apply powder, etc. I have a whole bunch of these sponges that I have for myself, like these little guys. You cannot reuse them on people. So either A, you're gonna have to gift them to somebody after you use it, or B, you're just going to have to throw them away. Alcohol and even really hot water and dish soap cannot kill all the bacteria inside of a sponge. It is a sponge, which means it's going to absorb product. That's why it was a horror story a really long time ago on YouTube when people were like cutting open their beauty blenders and found a whole bunch of stuff on the inside of it that was super disgusting. Like it looked clean on the outside, but it definitely wasn't on the inside because you cannot get those things 100% clean. So please do not be reusing beauty blenders on your clients. I've seen makeup artists do this numerous times and it's a big no-no. So just don't do it. <laughs> Instead, I like using disposable sponges, but I hate using those disposables that come in the blocks that you have to rip apart because they're so flimsy. They're kind of like using cardboard on your clients. It's really not efficient at all. So I like going in with these jumbo cosmetic wedge sponges. Um, they have hyaluronic acid infused in them, so they are very squishy and very bouncy, but they still do have quite a bit of a density to them, as you can tell. I have gotten these from CVS. They are the one and other brand, although I think online they're called Beauty 360. So just look for the jumbo wedge sponges. Those are the ones that you want to get, not the ones in the block. Locks. I carry a spray bottle on site with me and I just label it W for water and I'll wet these on site. So I'll just like spray it down, wring it out a couple of times and then I'll use this to apply on people. Once I'm done with this, I will throw it away. And then for each person that I have, I will use a clean disposable sponge on people. Pencil products, this is mainly eyeliners and lip liners. With pencils, you want to make sure you have the kind that actually can physically sharpen. That is the only thing that is going to be hygienic. If you guys have the pencils that twist up, spraying them down just with alcohol is not going to sanitize those all the way. So you are technically cross-contaminating if you do that method. So make sure they sharpen. So what you wanna do is take your pencil. I have this one right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and spray it down with 70% alcohol. I'm going to let this tip dry completely before I do anything else with it, just so it fully absorbs. Then once that is dry, you want to go ahead and take a pencil sharpener and go ahead and sharpen it. So you are removing the excess layer off of the top. And then you wanna go ahead and take your alcohol again and spray it down once more. And then once that is fully absorbed and dry, then you can go ahead and cap it off and now it's completely sanitized. Same method with brow pencils, but these are the ones that do twist up. However, since they are actual like harder pressed pencils, alcohol does actually sanitize these pretty well. So usually what I do with these is I just sanitize the tip with alcohol, I'll spray them off and let them dry. And then that is what I do as far as actual brow pencils. Then as far as lipsticks, I have mine all depotted into this palette. So of course I do scoop out these and put them on my palette. But if you are a person that carries lipstick from tubes like this, what you wanna do is go ahead and use your spatula, scrape off a little bit of the top of it like this, put it on your palette right there. And then you're gonna work off of that. Never 
ever, ever, and I mean ever, <laughs> apply this directly to somebody's lips and then just spray it down with alcohol, that's not going to get it clean. You need to depot all of your cream products, guys. And maintaining hygienic procedures like this definitely does take up a lot of time because you have to do this in between each and every client. Like you're not just doing it at the very end of all of your applications because otherwise that negates this whole entire sanitation process because you are cross contaminating. Even if it is a relative to somebody else that you're doing, like you need to do this in between each and every person. Then the last thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is false lashes. And yes, there is a hygienic way to apply false lashes too. I just cut all my false lashes up inside of this container. I'm gonna take out your false lashes. So I'm just gonna grab these. And you're going to go ahead and pull them, of course, off of your little backing that you have. And I usually set them down on my palette just so they're not going onto any other surface. And I know that it's hygienic. Obviously, then you want to measure it to a cleanse eye shape, cut it with your scissors. And then what you're going to do is apply it on the band, wait for it to dry, and then put it on your clients. However, say that for some reason you need to re-glue an eyelash or like a corner lifts or something because that happens a lot of times. Keep in mind that this lash has now sat on a person's eye or it has physically touched a person's eye. You can't just go in with this applicator again in between somebody's lashes and then re-glue it again because otherwise then you're cross-contaminating this lash glue and you have to throw it away afterwards. So instead of using the lash glue, what you wanna do is you want to take a disposable and that's why I carry around these eyeliner disposables. I don't actually use them for eyeliner, I use them for lash glue. So they have little protectors on top of it, but once you take away the protectors, it's this thin little applicator. And then same rules apply with the double dipping. So remove the applicator, then you want to dip in a little bit in the lash glue. Make sure you have some coated on there, and then you can go in right here on somebody's lash line and then re-glue those. Or if you needed to take it off completely, then you can go along the lash line and then re-stick them again. But again, just don't double dip anything that has touched somebody physically you cannot use the original applicators of a product on again. So yeah, that's just like pretty much the rule of thumb with this. And yeah, that is about it for this video. So if you guys really did enjoy this and learn something, then definitely go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If that button is still red, you have not subscribed, so go ahead and subscribe. And also hit that notification bell to get notified of each and every upload that I do. I will be uploading a new video all the way up until Christmas. So definitely go ahead and turn on those post notifications so you guys will get notified of whenever I upload. As always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.